All right, this is Tuck Everlasting, Chapter 11. It was a good supper, flapjacks, bacon, bread, applesauce, but they ate sitting about in the parlor instead of around a table. Winnie had never had a meal that way before, and she watched them carefully at first to see what rules there might be so that she did not know about. But there seemed to be no rules. Jessie sat on the floor and used the seat of a chair for a table, but the others held their plates on their laps. There were no napkins. It was all right, then, to lick the maple syrup from your fingers. Winnie was never allowed to do such a thing at home, but she had always thought it would be the easiest way. And suddenly... The meal seemed luxurious. After a few minutes, however, it was clear to Winnie that there was at least one rule. As long as there was food to eat, there was no conversation. All four tucks kept their eyes and their attention on the business at hand. And in the silence, given time to think, Winnie felt her elation and her thoughtless pleasure wobble and collapse. It had been different when they were out of doors, where the world belonged to everyone and no one. Here, everything was theirs alone. Everything was done their way. Eating, she realized now, was a very personal thing, not something to do with strangers. Chewing was a personal thing. Yet here she was, chewing with strangers in a strange place. She shivered a little and frowned, looking around at them. That story they had told her, why, they were crazy, she thought harshly, and they were criminals. They had kidnapped her right out of the middle of her own wood, and now she would be expected to sleep all night in this dirty, peculiar house. She had never slept in any bed but her own in all her life. All these thoughts flowed at once from the dark part of her mind. She put down her fork and said unsteadily, I want to go home. The tuck stopped eating and looked at her, surprised. May said soothingly, Why, of course you do, child. That's only natural. I'll take you home. I promised I would, as soon as we've explained a bit to why we got a promise you'll never tell about the spring. That's the only reason we brung you here. We got to make you see why. Then Miles said, cheerfully with a sudden sympathy, There's a pretty good old rowboat. I'll take you out for a row after supper. No, I will, said Jessie. Let me. I found her first, didn't I, Winnie Foster? Listen, I'll show you where the frogs are and... Hush, Tuck interrupted. Everyone hush. I'll take Winnie rowing on the pond. There's a good deal to be said, and I think we better hurry up and say it. I got a feeling there ain't a whole lot of time. Jesse laughed at this and ran a hand through his curls. That's funny, Pa. Seems to me like time's the only thing we got a lot of. But May frowned. You worried, Tuck? What's got you? No one saw us on the way up. Well, now, wait a bit. Yes, yes, they did, come to think of it. There was a man on the road just outside a tree gap, but he didn't say nothing. He knows me, though, said Winnie. She had forgotten, too, about the man in the yellow suit, and now, thinking of him, she felt a surge of relief. He'll tell my father he saw me. He knows you, said May, her frown deepening. But you didn't call out to him, child. Why not? I was too scared to do anything, said Winnie, honestly. Tuck shook his head. I never thought we'd come to the place where we'd be scaring children, he said. I guess there's no way to make it up to you, Winnie, but I'm sure most awful sorry it had to happen like this. Who was that man you saw? I don't know his name, said Winnie, but he seemed a pretty nice man, I guess. In fact, he seemed supremely nice to her now, a kind of savior. And then she added, he came to our house last night, but he didn't go inside. Well, that don't sound too serious, Pa, said Miles. Just some stranger passing by. Just the same, we got to get you home again, Winnie, said Tuck, standing up decisively. We got to get you home just as fast as we can. I got a feeling this whole thing is going to come apart like wet bread. But first, we got to talk. The pond's the best place. The pond's got answers. Come along, child. Let's go out on the water.